Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening and welcome. Welcome to our last session and uh, welcome to our firewall for a while. And uh, also welcome to a, um, well, a period of time when we're going to be able to rest since earlier as we're not going to have um, the classes anymore. But yeah, well, um, so tonight we are going to be wrapping it up basically closing this experience at least um for the or at the moment now uh something that we're going to be doing is that we're going to be talking about as i said yesterday we're going to be talking about um phrasal verbs and a little bit of idioms probably if we have the chance oh there's a cat so uh <laughs> um now there is one activity that we're going to do before any of that. And um, I will request from you guys to be as honest as possible during this activity because it's something that it's very important for me because, um, well, I have been working as a teacher not for a long while. And uh, to be honest with you, this was actually never my desire. Like when I started the university, I never really wanted or saw myself um, helping people access, you know, a new language or getting to know a new language. I was more on the realms of like looking for for a job at like at the airport or something like that. I wanted to be an interpreter. That was like my desire back then. But then life happened and experience happened, and I ended up here, you know, as a teacher. I became what I swore I was gonna destroy. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, it's part of the things that, that go on in life. It's not um, something that I regret or anything like that. But because I was never actually um, drawn by the desire of being a teacher, I feel like there might be some areas where I might lack a steel. So whenever I have the chance of like, you know, sharing with a group of people like you guys, um, I like to take like my uh the advantage i would say i like to take the advantage of asking you and uh, requesting from you your feedback like how did you feel during this process what are some areas that you will suggest me to um to modify or what are some of the suggestions you may have so that will help me grow and become better now for this course i have tried to use some of the things that uh, um previous groups um, requested from me, which was basically the activity of going to breakout rooms more often. Because what I normally do is that I make you guys practice here, like in front. And they say that sometimes, or some groups have told me that sometimes it feels better to just practice, you know, on your own or have the practice um, like privately or in smaller groups. So I decided to try that. I decided to go ahead and work with that. And it seems like it can work. I mean, you guys made it work. So probably that's something that I will continue to do. Um, back in the day, I would use breakout rooms, yes, but mostly for practice, mostly for like um, conversations and things like those. But now I I think I will use it more, you know, for, um, for also exercising or creating examples about things. Because, yeah, I, I also understand, you know, the fact that sometimes... Um, Providing an example in front of like everyone may be a little bit more frightening than providing an example in a smaller group. So that's something I have used with you. I have also given you more chances of practicing. The thing of the question at the beginning, that is totally mine, is something that I have done since like forever. Like since I started being a teacher, I always wanted to do that. So yeah, but the thing, the important thing here is that um I need your feedback. Okay. I want to hear. How do you guys feel? Is if there are like good areas or highlights, good um things to mention, it's all right. I mean, I'll take it. It's not like like I don't want to hear that, but I would like to hear um more of like the recommendations you may have. Like what things or aspects um would you like to to or would you love to have used or practiced more? Now. Something that I need to mention is that I cannot manage the platform, okay? That is something very important. I cannot change anything from the platform. So if the platform disappointed you in any way, that is not necessarily my fault. Um, but the things that we did during the class, 
those are the ones that I can manage to um, I can manage to 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 improve and to change if possible in the future. So that is the thing I would like to hear from you. Your feedback, good comments, bad comments, anything. It is accepted. As I said, I am. I feel like I am still, you know, able to change to modify myself, and uh, I just want to to be a better version of myself. Uh, and of course, in the terms of like being a teacher, I would like to to just work better if possible or whenever possible. So yeah. So um, I think I would like to start by hearing maybe from. From you, from Luis. So tell me, Luis, are there any recommendations or comments you would like to add um, about the lessons, about the, the module? Good evening. Evening. Excuse me, sir. I, I can't hear you very well. Can you repeat me, please? Yeah. Um, like, do you happen to have any recommendations or suggestions or comments about the classes that we had? Uh, yes, I... Ah, por I cierto, think, es, I, I... por cierto, perdón, perdón, que le interrumpa, pero esta, esta práctica puede ser en español, o sea, porque como le digo, es más eh, un favor que yo les estoy pidiendo, ¿verdad? En, en cuanto a que me dejen saber cuáles podrían ser algunas áreas en las que se sintieron bien o cuál es su perspectiva en general, digamos, del desarrollo de las clases. Así que, si gustan, igual lo pueden hacer en español, no hay problema, o sea, si, quieren, si se sienten más cómodos de esa forma, um, si lo quieren hacer en inglés, I, I take either. Sí, en este caso no importa, cualquiera que ustedes eh, elijan. So, yeah, uh, Luis. Yes, uh, I think the some recommendation about this class, uh, so, as we are in level advanced, yeah, I think we, we need to talk more in English <clears throat> and not in Spanish. I think in my personal opinion. Okay. Yeah, right. That uh, I think the, the more we can practice English in this hour, more and more, and this is the, the exactly time we can do it. Mm -hmm. So, we have uh, 23 hours per day. We can talk in Spanish, but this class in one hour, I think we need to talk more in English for this club only. All right, understood. Only. Okay, great. So okay. thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, great. How about in the case of um, Lorena? Would you happen to have any suggestions, recommendations, or comments about the development of the lessons? Well, first of all, I'm a teacher. Then you can think that, I'm, that I have a lot of things to tell you, but not no bad things. But just, I think that the first time that you, when you start asking us questions, it's a long time. Sometimes I feel like a bored mm -hmm. because we are a lot. We are twenty or so, and then. If you just give a lot of time for each one, and but you talk too much, then we have to talk, not you. Then you have to just to push us to continue speaking, but no, your it's like to hear your experiences and and all the, the things because we get like a, we know you better and we like just friends. But in that case, in, in this case, we need to 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 practice like. Uh, the person before, and I I think that in my case I I the first time I was just looking well, we are like um, too many and we have to to and the other thing that could be if we have to re to read something we have to read not you because we have you have to listen to us and you have and the, sometimes you said um, I don't like to to Correct. Say yeah to correct and you you have to do it because we don't have anybody to correct us and you're the teacher okay. and everybody every time that we say something bad in, instead of well yeah I'm just uh, talking to you and you I said something wrong in that moment you can write it and be like uh, we are talking and you're writing in a right board and and, and that t telling us the words that we can pronounce correctly later 
and or to write later then interest to start doing this. then i i like your your motivation i like your mood and i like everything that about that because it's that time i also it finish when it's everybody is uh, this course i i think that you have been very nice very uh, on time that's all, all of that things i like it from your you're like a happy person and sociable and and it's like an upper man and i like it i like to know about many things about you and and i feel like your friend and if, if i if i meet you or uh, i know if i see you in another, another time I, I would say hello and i i will have too many things to talk about okay yes. tomorrow at the sushi <laughs> okay, I don't like sushi. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. okay. I mean, they say ramen, so yeah. <laughs> no, okay. I'm just kidding. Okay, well, understandable. And uh, okay, so for um, next opportunities, I will have that in mind. You know, the fact that um, sometimes the thing is that I try to like place the example first because, uh, as we know, there are some students that may not know some of the words. So that's what I, why sometimes when we have like reading activities, I prefer to read it first and then let you guys do it. But it's understandable. I see where you're coming from. And as you say, you are a teacher and you have been a teacher for a longer time than I have. So I feel like, yeah, I'll take that. And uh, I'll also try to practice that because, yeah, having students um, make mistakes, I think, is what sometimes helps them. The thing is that um, one of my biggest problems is that I started being a teacher or liking the, prof the, 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 the proficiency with kids. And kids get traumatized. When they make mistakes, they get traumatized. So, or at least the ones that I learned with. So that's why I was, um, how can we refer to this? Um, too humble, maybe, when it comes to correcting them or to correcting a student. Because I remember that when I told them, no, 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 you don't say it like that. You say it like this. They will cry because they were kids in kindergartens. So that's why sometimes I'm like, no, I, I don't want to traumatize these guys. Um, I don't want to make them feel bad, you know, because you made mistakes. But I feel like as adults, um, I feel like we should. And we I, I am going to start um, using that a little bit more because, yeah, I am working with adults now. And, uh, well, you guys will have to be more understandable when when there are mistakes made. So, yeah, well, um. So yeah, thank you very much. And uh, let's see if we can hear from maybe um, Gabriela. In your case, Gabriela, would you happen to have any recommendations, comments, or suggestions about the classes uh, that we developed? Me? Yes, yes, you. Uh, um, teacher, I'm not in my home, so I'm sorry if it's my voice doesn't sound good right now um well recommendation uh i don't know um i feel good with the develop of this class and thank you for all your report to teach us um all the subjects so right now i don't have any recommendation all right well Thank you then. Thank you. And uh, okay. So how about in the case of um, Carla, would you happen to have any suggestions, recommendations or comments about the lessons? Hi, teacher. Um, hey there. Um, I mean, like the first person uh, that gave uh, his opinion. I mean, we can speak uh, in English more than in Spanish, I know some some um so uh, sometimes it's necessary because you have to say you have to be clear you want to be clear and and I understand but I mean uh, it's important to speak in English a, a little more and and. Um, and put attention in pronunciations. I know for me, I I I need to learn a learn more and and more vocabulary. Maybe someone uh, have the idea and have a uh, 
en can can say a sentences can they someone can know how how to connect eh, a sentences or say something but when a word when you don't know how to say any word that's stop you and and use use that mm -hmm. i mean it's it's all teacher that's all right. Okay, so yeah, more time to practice English in advanced levels. That's great. Um, and in this case, it's not like I'm defending myself. It sounds like I am. But I feel like one of the problems that I have is, as, as you said, is that I, tr I try and I want to be clear. And uh, I have been with groups before that are advanced, but they don't really know some of the things that I'm saying. And another thing is that sometimes they request for me to not not to speak too fast or not to use words that are complicated. So that's what has traumatized me in this case into trying to help you guys with Spanish. But still, um, I see where you're coming from. And as Luis said, uh, you guys want to make the most out of this hour. So yeah, for future occasions, I will of course make sure that I you know keep that in mind and that I give you guys more spaces or more activities where you can practice your English. Because yeah, that's the aim. That's the goal that we have. So, of course, um, I understand where you're coming from with that. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, how about in the case of uh, Melanie? Would you happen to have any suggestions, comments, or recommendations about the lessons that we had? Hola. Hey there. Me escuchan. Yes. No, realmente no. No he tenido ningún problema, solo mm -hmm. quiero ver solamente no realmente he aprendido bastante. No tengo ningún okay, well, thank you. Um sí, Rosa. Um because I using um because I using um uh, because I don't use the uh connectors. For example, I um and also uh in but y así que casi no se usan conectores en una conversación. Oh, le gustaría como poder... Eh, okay, Ajá, como decir? para saber en qué momento usar un conector. Ah, ok. Creo, fíjense que no estoy seguro, pero creo que en cursos venideros, o sea, en los cursos que todavía les faltan, por, eh, pues pasar, creo que ahí va a haber más de eso. Porque el problema es que a veces hay temas que, o sea, también eh, no me puedo necesariamente salir, ¿verdad? De la idea que, que ya está marcada. Eh, por eso es que muchas ocasiones también les pregunto si hay algo que les gustaría cubrir o alguna cosa que, que quisieran saber para poder eh, como darle mayor, darles mayor información acerca de esto. Um, but yeah, it's like, uh, when to use and also. Well, that is, and also basically is used when you're trying to establish a connection between two ideas that come with the same topic. Like, um, let's say that... Um, I'm telling you that we're going on a, on a on a vacation trip and you need to bring some money and also don't forget about your your what your box spray. So yeah, that will be something, you know, it's like following the same idea, following the same topic and making a connection between those two separate things. That's when you would use that. Now, when you use bot, it's normally uh when you want to establish a difference so it will be something like um i like coffee but i don't see the point on drinking it that often so you know it's it's like creating a corner basically when you use bot is that you're creating a corner you come with an idea here then you introduce bot and you introduce a different idea that goes like sideways from what you were saying before um so yeah that's the, the reason why sometimes we um we have those connectors and is another connector that we normally use. And that one is used, well, 
in this in a very similar way, way as and also because we simply join uh, sentences or ideas together when we use and. For example, well, it's very easy. Like uh, I can say, I need to go to the bank and to the cafeteria. So I'm saying that I have to do those two things and they are joined together by that connector. Um, it's a very interesting topic and I'm sorry that we didn't have, you know, the time to cover it up like fully because yes, connectors are very important. But as I said, it was not part of my, um, my curricula for these lessons. So that's why I didn't include it. However, as I have said before, whenever you guys have that chance, you know, when someone offers you that chance of like, um, talking about something that you want to know, try to use those chances because they are important. They don't come all the time. I know that um, very few people here are going to offer you the chance of like covering something that um, <laughs> that, uh, that yeah, that it's like new, let's say. So yeah, or apart from from the regular. But still, it's it's part of the process. So for the next one, I hope that you know you can learn more about uh, those connectors now how Thank about you okay you're welcome you're very welcome okay um so let's see if we can hear maybe from leslie do you happen to have any suggestions or recommendations about the lessons mm, i don't have any recommendations because I'm happy with the methodology and the whole class and with the uh, activities in team. So mm, I'm happy with All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you then. So the things that I take from this is that I need to try to cover um, or provide you more chances of, for speaking English, using more English during the lessons, that is completely understandable. And thank you very much for being honest about it. And also, as Lorena said, um, give you guys more spaces for you to make mistakes. So those will be like the main things and also not spending too much time um, with the, well, the questions at the beginning. So thank you very much from my part, something that, that I have been meaning to say, and it's something that I normally, you know, tell you is that I want to thank you. I want to thank you honestly, because it's a great effort, the one that you're doing. Like not everyone, you know, wants to spend one hour day after day after day um, here trying to, to learn a new language is something that very few people are willing to do. And you guys are. So it's great. And, and it makes me feel proud about, well, you and this country, because I can see that. I mean, I have been working here for two years and I have only repeated groups once. So that means that there are tons and tons of people included in this process, which also means that there are tons and tons of people who are trying to become um, more able or get better opportunities. And these opportunities are not only for you. They are opportunities that you guys can bring to your families, to your communities. So it's, it's something great. And uh, really, and honestly, thank you very much for this effort. I know that it's not easy sometimes. Sometimes it's like depressing, you know, when you don't know how to pronounce uh, a word when you don't remember how to say a sentence. So it's something that uh, takes a lot from you and it also takes time. So seeing the advances that you have, many of you who have simply just learned English here, it is great and it makes me feel, as I said, very, very thankful and very proud of who you guys are becoming. So thank you. Yes, Leslie? I have a question. Will mm -hmm. you be our teacher in the other model? It's basically impossible it's very very Why? hard yeah it happens it, as i said as i just said it has only happened once that is the only time that i have um actually had a, a different i mean like the same group it happens with a few students for example sandra she worked with me before she was in one of my classes previously but sandra is like one in a million um I think like Sandra, I have had only like five students who have worked with me before. And then that group that, I mean, it was, um, I think it was, it was pre-intermediate and then they got into intermediate. So I worked with them, but it was not, it wasn't really back to back. It was like, um, I think it was the first month on like February. And then I saw them again on like June, something like that. 
So it wasn't like back to back. So it's very, very hard and it's almost impossible. I, I know that they requested me twice. There have been two groups who have requested me to be their teacher, but uh, I think Corporativo doesn't, doesn't do that. So yeah, I, I think it's, it's very difficult for me to like, you know, be with you guys again on a, on a next module, but maybe who knows, maybe. So, uh, I'm, yes, I'm mad with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry about it. Yeah. But, uh, okay. So I told you yesterday that we were going to be covering, uh, the phrasal verbs and we're going to continue talking about it. Um, so some of them, as we saw yesterday, are some of the most basics, like go off, wake up, get up, uh, and put on. Now we move into a little bit more trickier ones, but at the same time, um, simple and very useful, of course. So the first one will be dress up. So dress up, um, when we use this, this verb, is normally to refer to putting on a smart or formal clothes. However, we can also use it when we wear costumes, like in a Halloween, when you know people dress up as I don't know their favorite um, scarecrow or maybe their favorite character from a scary movie, or simply just their favorite character as from any um, any kind of like media out there. So dressing up can be used for those two um, things for wearing a smart or formal clothes, so like in, in the case of a man, when we wear suit and tie, and in the case of women, well, when you guys have to wear a blazer and uh, maybe a skirt, nowadays, it's also acceptable that you guys wear pants, but when you use a, a formal dress, basically, when you wear a suit, so that's when we're going to use the verb uh, dress up. So, for example, you can say, I only dress up on special occasions like weddings or other other um, celebrations. So it's a very common thing, you know, dressing up only for like special occasions, like weddings and things like those. Uh, so yeah, dress up. Next one up, tidy up. Tidy up, and we can also say tidy up something, like for example, tidy up your room or tidy up um, your drawer. So those are examples that we can use with tidy up. It is simple bring something to order or bring bring order to or arrange neatly so tidy up is simply referred to that to ordering up or to bringing something to order and like example, organizing yeah like organizing but at the same time cleaning so cleaning and organizing it's like okay. you know leaving it leaving it shine as shine as possible so yeah uh the example the children don't like tidying up their rooms but they always do it. So there you have it. So they don't like to tidy up, but it's still, they always do it because it's like a, like a practice, a common practice or um, part of like the customs that we have. Now, the next one is switch something on or switch something uh, off because I think we don't have it here, but yeah, switch something on. It means to start the flow of operation of something by means of a tap, switch or button. So switch on, it is um, used when we are referring to an equipment normally. And this is one of those phrase verbs that can be divided. So it means that you can place a noun here. You can say like, um, switch the TV on, switch the lights on. That is a very common one as well. However, it can also be used when we are referring to ourselves. Like um, when you join these classes, you can say I'm switching on to the class. So it's it's a very new way of saying it. It's not something very old. Normally what you say is I join. So that's the most common one. But now people are also starting to use switch on as of course you kind of like activate the thing. So yeah, switch on. Uh, and example, see, she switched on the TV to watch her favorite show. So here we can say switch the TV on or switch on the TV. I prefer to say switch the TV on because it sounds more complicated and it can confuse people and I like that. So I prefer to say it or to use these phrasal verbs with the noun in the middle. However, you can use them as they come here, you know, the phrasal verb or together and then the noun and then the complement. So that's up to you. Then we have take off. This is the contrary of put on 
take off is basically removing clothing from one's or another's body. So taking off. Um, okay, so take off is just that, you know, when you um, remove clothing from your or somebody else's body. And you can say something like, I took off my shoes and lay down on the sofa. However, this is another of those phrasal verbs. Yes, es la parte de verdad siempre interesante. This phrasal verb can also be used when we talk about planes. When a plane is about to depart from the airport, that is also a takeoff. Okay, so takeoff is also used when a plane is leaving the airport or it's about to depart from the airport. So that's also takeoff. Uh, basicamente, let's say. Yeah, let's say the word. Um, Favorite, I was bad reading. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, yeah. Favorite. Uh, let's see. There we have it. All right, thank you. Um, so take off. Is as I was saying, it's all, it can also be used when we talk about planes, when a plane is leaving the airport. So that is another use for the word takeoff. Next one's up, we have warm up. So warm up is um, the most common one or the most common use that we have for this one is to prepare for physical exertion or a performance by exercising or practicing um, gently beforehand. So this is warm up now this used to be like the most basic meaning behind it now we can also use it in terms of like um mental activities as well so what we say is that in english there are normally warm-up activities which happened um, to be at the beginning of the classes so warm-up is basically just a preparation you know like uh a welcome into the activity that you're going to develop. So here we can say that warm up right now, we can uh, or are learning that it is used for physical exertion. However, it is also possible to use it for mental activities um, as well. So yeah, warm up. I always warm up thoroughly before going out for a jog. That is um, the example that we have for this phrasal verb. Now, it is very common to see warm up with a hyphen so don't get scared when you see it like that it is very very use, um, usual to see it with a hyphen but it can also be used um, separately so next one is um, work out so work out is engage in vigorous physical exercise so that is work out engage in vigorous physical exercise John tries to work out three or five times a week at the local gym. So this one is very simple. Workout is um, to have a physical exercise or a strong physical exercise for a sustained period of time. Sustained could be like an hour, two hours. So that is what we are going to refer as workout. Now, next one up is let in or let somebody in. Let in is admit someone to a room, building, or area. So let in is used normally when we are requesting permission. Okay. It is different from coming in because coming in is the act of actually walking into the room. However, letting in is when you ask for permission. So it's 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 different there, or there's a difference there. Because when um you simply come in, it's like, you are the one who makes the rules. You are the one who has the final word there. And simply, you come in because you can. However, in the terms of letting in, it's like you have to ask someone. And this is a very common practice when it comes to like um, schools or um, educational institutions and also at workplaces that, you know, you need to request someone the permission to enter in a specific room. So, yeah, let in. Then the example that we have is we let our lovely dog in the house every morning. So here it is also being used as a separate phrasal verb 
and it's very simple as well. The meaning behind it is simply just to let in the dog into the house every morning. So it's like you give the dog the permission to enter uh, the house every morning. So letting in is getting into a place, however, by asking permission. Then we have come in. Come in is enter a room, building, or other place. This one is without permission, without asking anyone. It's just uh, basically you walking into a place. However, you can also use it in a polite phrase when you ask someone to come into a place as well. So you can tell um, someone, please come in and sit down. So sit down is another of those phrasal verbs. I think we're not going to cover it, but sit down is very simple. It's used when we're talking about, um, well, simply sitting, you know, um, sitting in a place. So yeah. Um, next one's up. We're going to move into the next ones, and we have now move over. So move over is to adjust uh one's position to make room for someone else. Move over, or in terms of like friendly um occasions, we can also use ah sorry, scoop over. See, move over or scoop over. So it depends. Move over is more formal. It's used when um, you are like, I don't know, at the movies or at, at a theater or a place where the rest of the people might not be your friends. You might not know them. So you can ask people to move over. So that's basically just displacing the people just so that you can make room for someone else. But when you are with people that you know and you have confidence with, you can tell them scoop over. So scooping as when you are serving um, ice cream, it's like basically making some room, okay? So scoop over will be like make some room for someone else. It's the same idea. Uh, the only thing that changes is when you're going to use it because move over is for like every occasion and scoop over is mostly when you are with people that you know and that you have confidence with. So yeah, example, uh, could you guys move over so I can sit down as well? please. So you're asking or requesting a group of people to make some room for you to, to sit down or for you to, to fit in, in a specific place. Now, number 14, kick someone out. So kicking out is going to mean to expel or dismiss someone. This one is used in schools, is used also at workplaces, and it can also even be used at sports. Because kicking out is just um, meaning that you are expelled or um, they request you to leave, you know, to step aside or not to continue practicing or visiting the place at which, at which you are at at the moment that you're kicked out. So, yeah. Uh, example, they kicked me out of the club after the fight. So it means that you got into trouble, you did something wrong. So now you're out. You are no longer allowed into this place. And now you simply have to be away. So there is no way that you're coming in again. You are kicked out. Now, next one is drink up. Drink up is to consume the rest of a drink. Now, we can use drink up also when we are having alcoholic drinks in terms of like drinking fast. So when you were saying that uh, we're drinking up, we can also say that when we're having like a, like a challenge or like a competition to see who drinks, you know, uh, an alcoholic drink faster. That can also be a drink up. However, um, the most common use for this is simply to co quickly consume the rest of a drink. So there you have it as well. Uh, so yeah, drink up. Um, now, we have actually the example refers to an alcoholic drink, because as you see, it is a very common practice when it comes to those sorts of drinks. So she drank up what was left of her beer and left in a hurry. So drink up. So it's basically drinking something fast. Now, next one up, pick up. Now, pick up in terms of like phrasal verb, it is used as answering the phone or answering, answering a telephone call when we use it as a phrasal verb. When we use it as a phrase or like in a separate way or with a separate meaning, it means to 
literally picking something up, like lifting something from the floor or lifting something uh, from, uh, from a base or from the place where we're standing. So pick up as a phrasal verb is used to refer to answering the phone. Pick up as a phrase, as a regular uh, or in a regular use is going to mean to lift something from uh, from below. So the reason why cars are called pickup or pickup trucks is because they have the power of lifting things or carrying things from a place to another. So that is why we have pickup trucks. Now, the example, I kept calling her, but she wouldn't pick up. So I couldn't tell her the news. So there you have it. The difference is, that when we use it as a phrasal verb and that we know that it's a phrasal verb, we are using it in the sense of answering a phone call or picking up the phone, which is also simple, okay? Picking up, it's simply because back in the day or even now, phones are normally placed on a surface and we have to lift them from that surface just to answer them. So that is why we use the word pick up because we make the action of like lifting the phone and bringing it up to our ears. So that is why we use pick up. Now, the next one is um, speak up. So speaking up is when you are, let's say in a presentation or having a conversation with someone and you simply need that person to talk more loudly or to be um, louder for them to be, or for you um, to listen to them in a clearer way. So speaking up when we request it because it's normally a request it's going to be that um you are basically asking this person to be louder to just so you can understand or hear better what they are saying now the example is that on the phone um you can ask someone could you speak up please i can't hear you properly so sometimes you guys have done that with me like when i make um you know the mistake of like not having my microphone where I have to or where it should be. So you ask me to um to speak up or you let me know that it's hard for you guys to listen to me. So um speaking up is basically that. It refers to speaking louder or being louder at the moment of speaking. So yeah. Then we have hang up. Now hang up or hung up on someone. There is a difference of like how dramatic you look if you simply hung up or if you hung up on. Because when you hung up, it's finishing the call. Okay. It's that just basically um ending a telephone call. So that's hung up. Now, hung up on is going to mean that you finish the call, but in an abrupt way. Like you don't want to talk to this person anymore. And just like, like with, um, you know, with that feeling, like you don't want this conversation to continue. So you hung up on. So it's like you're mad and you don't want to hear this person. So you hang up on someone. So um, now, please don't get confused here because um, some people do and they feel like hang up. Um, sorry. So hang, um, hang up is the same as hang out. But no, hang out is something totally different. Hanging out is what happens when you spend time with friends or uh, with people that you want to be. Um, so yeah, hanging out is just that, you know, spending time with people. But hang up is ending a telephone call. And hanging up on is en ending the telephone call, but with eager, with um, the desire or maybe the feeling of uh, like that you don't want to be on that phone or on that telephone call anymore. Now, the next one is, Chill out. Chill out, it's very common. It's a very useful one as well. It is used to ask people to calm down or relax. So yeah, chill out. Um, nowadays, it's also common just to say chill. Like it's, it's very common. And uh, there is even memes about it. Like you can um, have Netflix and chill and stuff. Uh, but yeah, chilling is simply just you know, like relaxing or calming down or trying to calm down a situation or someone that is uh, what or how we're going to use chill out. Now, the example, at the end of the day, I just want to put my feet up and chill out before going to bed. So it's, it means that 
uh, after I'm done working. I just don't want to do much more. I just want to relax and go to bed. So that is why we're using chilling out here. However, when someone is mad, like when someone is um, in, into an argument or maybe about to get into a fight, you can ask this person to chill, like chill out, chill out, like trying to calm them down. You can say both at a time. Um, people do because it's like, you know, it's like they're trying to insist it's because maybe of the desperation that they're seeing that someone is about to get into a fight. So maybe you are going to hear people saying, chill out, calm down, chill out, calm down. And it's because of that, because of the desperation. However, chill out is a more modern way of saying calm down. So yeah, then we have uh, doze off. Doze off is fall likely asleep. Doze off is very, very common, or sorry, very, very similar to the drift off that we learned a few days ago. So doze off or drift off, it's basically the same. Because it's it happens when you um when you fall asleep, but for a short amount of time. It's then mostly it also happens when the, um when you don't do it like on purpose. Okay, so dozing off and drifting off is something that happens, and you don't do it on purpose. It's not like you want to fall asleep. It's simply that you are so tired that you cannot um hold it anymore. And you simply fall asleep for a little. So yeah. And then we have the example. I don't take a real nap after lunch. I simply doze off for a bit in front of the TV. So this person is saying that um, he or she doesn't necessarily take a long time to like sleep or take a real nap. Um, what they do is simply that, you know, they fall asleep for a bit. This is my dad, like every time, you know, he always, when he comes for lunch, uh, this is him totally. He might be watching the news and after a while you hear that he is snoring, but then he's awake again watching the news and then he's snoring and then watching the news. So that's totally him. So yeah, it's it's a very common practice. Uh, yeah? well, it's also, um, it's because um I was I was um I say. It's just sleeping in in a from uh up um um sí. o sea cómo decirle el drone oh, yo entiendo que se usa para cuando eh, digamos que uno se duerme enfrente de algo o enfrente de algún algún objeto cerca o me equivoco um, o hay una diferencia de dormirse a dormir de el sleeping es que el dos off como decía pasa más que todo cuando nos quedamos dormidos pero involuntariamente o sea cuando nos dormimos como porque estábamos cansados pero no es no era la idea dormirse y por eso es que es bien similar al al, al drift off el drift off es o sea cuando yo me duermo eh, que estoy en una clase, una reunión y pues digamos estoy cansado, so I drift off me duermo pero luego me despierto rápido básicamente así funcionaría el doze off, el doze off es cuando estoy eh, lo mismo verdad tal vez, qué sé yo, en una sala de espera, entonces si pues no sé, de aburrimiento tal vez eh, me quedo dormido un momento y es I'm dozing off, o sea pero es solo cuando pasa por un momento no es una nap, no es que me dormí por 10 minutos ya eso es una nap, sí, 10 minutos, 5 minutos o más, es una nap. En cambio, el doze off o drift off es un, quizás 2, 3 minutos, entonces eso sería como la diferencia, ¿verdad? Que exista entre el nap y, claro, sleep ya es diferente, because when you sleep, it's like you sleep up to 3 hours. That is not a nap anymore, because that's a, a sleeping um, period. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Okay, now, next one's up. It's, uh, these ones are the last ones that I have here to share with you guys. And uh, so the first one is run out, run out of, sorry, run out of. So run out of, um, we're going to use it when we finish one supply or when we finish our supply of something. Like uh, when we are running out of shampoo, in the house or we are running out of sugar or we are running out of coffee so it's like 
that is about to be done. We are about to not have um, that in storage anymore. So we are about to, um, to run out of it. Entonces, yeah, that's when we are going to use this one, when we are about to not have. Uh, now, we have the example. We're, we've run out of X. Could you go and get some more, please? Oh, sorry. Here we have it. Ooh. So we've run out of X. Could you go and get some more, please? So that basically means that we don't have any X. We don't have more X and we need more X. So running out of something, you can also run out of feelings because you can run out of patience. You can run out of love. You can run out of uh, anger. So you can also run out of uh, feelings. But what we normally do is that we run out of things. Now, put back or put something back is to replace something. Because put back uh, is, um, you can use it for, for two different ways. You can use it for bringing it back to where it was, or you can also use it to replacing it as in buying a new one and giving this new one to its original owner. So putting back can be used in those two different ways. So put back or put something back, it means to replace. Now, remember to put the books back on the shelves when you finish reading them. So remember to put the books back on the shelves when you finish reading them. That means that um, you are going to return the books to where you take them, took them from. And uh, yeah, that is going to be like the basic meaning behind um, putting back or putting something back. It's This one is one of those where it's very common, very, very common to use it um, in like separate way. It's like way more common to use it like that than using it together. So don't be scared when you find it, you know, like that. It's very, very common. It's like the most common way of using it when you put the thing or the something in the middle, like between the two, the two words that made up the phrase or verb. Now we have also look after. Look after is very, very similar to saying take care. It's like um, a synonym of saying take care. And as you see in its definition, we say it's take care of something or someone. So very simple, right? Uh, I normally ask my parents to look after my dog when I'm on holiday abroad. So I normally ask my parents to look after my dog when I'm on holiday abroad. So this means that looking after is basically keeping an eye on or taking care of something or someone. So you can look after, I don't know, your nieces, your nephews, your sons, daughters. So looking after something is basically, well, taking care of that. Then we have talk back to. Um, here normally is talk back to someone. So talk back to is when you reply defiantly or um, insolently. So replying or answering someone but when you like want to get into an argument, like when you um, show this person that you are, or I mean, when you don't show respect to the person. So that is talking back to. So um, let's say that you have your kids and uh, you tell them to do something and they don't do it. So you are, I don't, I don't know, lecturing them now and they talk back to you. Like they speak loud to you. That is talking back. Okay. And it's, uh well a common practice among teenagers i feel like it's uh, something that many teenagers do and we have here the example unfortunately all children talk back to their parents from time to time so yes it's like you know the bad reaction that you have when your parents are telling you to do something but you don't want to do it or when your parents are reminding you of something and uh, you don't want to be reminded about that so that is talking back to. Now, uh, I want to know, do you guys happen to have any questions about any of these phrasal verbs or have they been clear thus far? Okay, so it seems like no. Now we move on into the idioms section. 
con este lo que voy a hacer es que se los voy a mostrar todos aquí lo que normalmente hago es que voy uno por uno pero um, ahorita pues ya básicamente nos quedamos sin tiempo así que mejor se los muestro todos de una vez y ustedes pueden ver cuáles son los diferentes idioms que tenemos acá sí los voy a leer y pues para los que tengamos chance los vamos a a conocer un poco so we have a dime a dozen beat around the bush better late than never this one is very easy Break a leg, I think it's also a very common one. Call it a day. Cutting corners. Easy does it. Get out of hand. Get your act together. Give someone the benefit of the doubt. This one is another one that is very common. Go back to the drawing board. Hang in there. Hit the sack. It's not rocket science. Make a long story short. Miss the boat. No pain, no gain. Pull someone's leg. So far, so good. I speak of the devil, that's the last straw, the best of both worlds, to make matters worse, under the weather, and you can say that again. Okay, so these ones are some of the most common idioms in English. Now, I am going to share, uh, oh well, in your case, which ones would you like to get to know? Would you, um, I, will, I will give you the chance to pick one to see what's the meaning behind the idiom. I know that some of them are very common, very easy to understand. Like for example, better late than never is something that um, we even say it in Spanish. Um, break a leg is also a very common one. Uh, and also this one, giving someone the benefit of the doubt. However, is there any idiom here that you would like to know like closer or in a deeper way? No pain, no gain. Okay, so no pain, no gain is a very common idiom for for people who go to the gym, actually. And it means that uh, in order for you to get something, in order for you to see results on something, you have to suffer before. It's like, okay. yeah, if, for example, in your case, you want to learn English, you have to stay up late just so you can learn English. Um. So yeah, no pain, no gain. It means that um, you have to sacrifice something in order to get the results that you expect. So yeah, great. Um, any other one? Well, if you guys don't ask for any, then I have, for example, this one over here, hit the sack. Hit it's the sack. yeah, hit the sack. It's one of my favorites. I use it very, very often. I used to um to be more active in the use of this idiom, but now it's like uh you know. I don't like use it that much anymore. Uh, but yeah, back in the day, I used to to say hit the sack very often. And it means going to bed. So it's like when you are to go about to go to bed, you can say something like, okay, people, I'm going to hit the sack. And that means that you're going to bed. The reason why we use it like that is because people who go camping or people from like the military who will sleep on, on like rough surfaces, They have a sleeping bag, but they also call it a sleeping sack. So hit the sack means that you're going to bed. So yeah, hit the sack. Okay, then uh, another one that is that is great is this one. You can say that again. So this idiom, you can use it when you agree with someone's opinion. Like someone says, for example, um, I wish we could do something to solve this heat problem that we are having. And you agree with that, like you also feel like, you know, it will be great to have a chance to do something. You can answer this person. Yeah, you can say that again. Or normally we do it when we are enjoying something. Like let's say we go to a pupusa place and we all like the pupusas that we're eating. And someone uh, is brave enough to say, you know, oh, these pupusas are amazing. Um, and you agree with that person. You can answer again. You can say that again. Uh, but, or, it's, but it's also when you want to repeat someone. No, when you want someone to repeat something, you should say, can you say that again? Can you uh, say it in, in, a, in a question form? But okay. here it's in a common way and it's like more like saying, I agree with you, okay. basically. Uh -huh. in terms, instead of saying, I agree, um, you say, oh yeah, you can say that again. So basically that means, you know, that you agree with the person. So yeah. Um, well, under the weather is one that I feel like you guys know already. It is used when you don't feel the best, when you feel like, um, like getting sick, uh, that is being under the weather. 
Now, another one is pulling someone's leg. When you pull someone's leg, it means that you are joking. So basically, that's the meaning behind this one. So pulling someone's leg, it means that um, what you're saying is not serious. You're not talking facts here. You are more trying to be funny and trying to, um, I don't know, in a way, maybe impress the person. So yeah, I'm just pulling your leg. It's like, I'm, I'm joking. So yeah, uh, well, basically, that's, that's it. Time is up. Time is over. And uh, well, for us, at least for now, it has been everything that we had. So uh, as I was saying, thank you guys very much for, well, for your great effort, you know, for the great work that you're doing. I am really impressed by many of you and how advanced you are, how honestly advanced you are. So yeah, keep it up. You know, it's it's an effort and I know it's hard sometimes, but still, you're doing an amazing job. So keep it up, continue doing what you're doing. And I'm sure that you're going to achieve your goal of speaking English fluently, um, well, faster than a, than a bala train. So yeah, um, thank you very much for everything. Thank you for your attention and participation in all the lessons. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your life and see you in the next one. So bye-bye for Goodbye. now. Bye. Thanks okay. for everything. You're very bye -bye, welcome. Bye-bye, teacher. Okay, bye-bye.